Alright guys, Crazy TV is coming back at ya with a review for Never Say Never Again. Because I'm doing all the Bond films and I'm going from Dr. No right through to Spectre, I thought I would do a Never Say Never Again video as well. Got to include them all. It's not an official Bond film, I know, but it's still a James Bond film, so let's get into it. Okay guys, no fears, limits, or substitutes. Let's do this. Evan Kirshner, first ever American to direct a James Bond film, even though it wasn't the official series. The budget was around 35 million bucks and it made around, I believe, from memory, around 168 million. Probably about 20 something million less than Octopussy, so it did get beaten at the box office. Sean Connery is back. The walking wig is back. Or oh, to pay my hippish. Look. This time at least he looks healthier and he looks fitter than he did in Diamonds Are Forever. Because as we all know in Diamonds Are Forever, Sean Connery was walking around like, oh, thank you very much, um, fat Elvis. He was fat Elvis Connery in Diamonds Are Forever. He was absolutely terrible. By the way, I'm itching my nose because it's winter here and I haven't been snorting cocaine. So don't get any crazy ideas that Crazy Kajibi is doing really bad stuff because I don't do that. I've just got an itchy nose. Okay, guys. So now that that is out of the way, I'm comfortable. Let's get back into the review. Okay, so. Oh my goodness, itchy nose. <laughs> so, guys. All right. There's no real PTS here, which is not what some people may think PTS, it's pre-title sequence. So, not really pre-title sequence, obviously there's no gun barrel and there's no James Bond theme because this wasn't a traditional James Bond film. It was a bit of a rogue film, I'm not gonna go into the history all about it with Kevin Knobhead McGlory or anything like that at the moment. That is a big, long, complicated video for another time. So we see James Bond on a mission, he's going, <laughs> spitting little things in people's necks, trying to strangle them, shoot them and all that. It's not bad, it's kind of a cool little covert thing. We later find out that it's a training drill and it's all kind of pre-done and Bond's been recorded and then M later on, we see M, who I'm gonna to get to in a moment, is watching this and then he basically yells at Bond for getting stabbed and saying he fails in this mission. Now, I'm gonna get straight into M, Edward Fox. Oh dear. This is the worst M ever. He is shocking. All he does is yell. He horrifically overacts. It's like, I don't know, did Irvin Kirshner not have the balls to bring his performance, Edward Fox's performance in? Because he is seriously just, it is terrible. It is cringeworthy. I mean, there's a toilet, there's stuff in the toilet, and right next to the stuff in the toilet is Edward Fox's performance as M. Flush it. <laughs> Bad, terrible. All right, so Bond goes on a mission. It's basically the exact same plot from Thunderball, just done slightly differently. So badass Ligo steals some nuclear bombs. We never really find out exactly what happened well, to the second nuclear bomb. He steals nuclear bombs. They use Domino, who this time is played by Kim Basinger, and they use her brother, Jack Batachi, to do a little, basically, they use him Fake high, he gets in, he puts in the code, weaponizes these nuclear bombs, and Spectre steal the nuclear bombs through Largo. Now, Largo is played by Klaus Maria Brandau. Wow. He's a highlight of this film. I absolutely love his performance as Largo. Very different from uh, Adolf Selly in Thunderball, but really good. He's just a maniac. He is like, he kind of remind, reminds me of like Christopher Walken in A View to a Kill, who was just completely unhinged and a nut. And Klaus Maria Brandau, the way he stares at Domino and that scene where, you know, she says, and what will you do if I leave you? You know, because she's got this really apparently valuable necklace and he's like, I will slit your throat. And then he looks at her and he's like, <laughs> like, like smiling about it. And she's just staring at him like, yeah, okay. Um, I'm kind of in love with a psycho here. So James Bond goes on the mission to find these nuclear weapons. He meets up with the first black Felix Leiter, played by Bernie Casey. And I, I love Bernie Casey as, um, as Felix Leiter. I wish there was a bit more screen time with him, with him and Connery. Their um, personalities seem to gel, so there's definitely definitely chemistry there. And yeah, I like him as Felix Leiter. He's pretty cool. Um, so, 
Fatima Blanche is a crazy badass. She's basically like Thunderball's version of um, Fiona uh, Volpe. And oh my goodness, Barbara Carrera here as Fatima Blush, she steals everything, every scene she's in. She literally steals every scene she in, she's in. She is bat poop crazy. She's jealous. She's a nut. She's just unhinged. And oh my goodness, cannot get enough of her. When she does leave the film with a little bit of a pen, pen, pen trick from the old Q branch and she blows up. Yeah, the film misses her, absolutely. Now, before she kicks the bucket, she's basically chasing James Bond in what is the highlight of the film as far as the action scenes. Now, there's not a huge amount of action scenes in Never Say Never Again. There is a fair bit of talky-talky. I'll get to the pacing on all that stuff in a moment, but there is a fantastic bike scene. It seems like it's a bit raw, it's a bit energetic, and there's one shot where James Bond hits like a turbo button on it, the bike goes up over the, over the car, you see front part of wheel or something of the bike fly off and that shot where it comes over, beautiful shot composition, fantastic. Then he hits the boost button later and he boom, straight over friggin' what is it, French Riviera or whatever, straight over, that looks awesome. So it's a really, really cool bike scene. I just wish there was a bit more action in the film like it because it's pretty cool when it does arrive. Um, the big boat, Largo's boat, is not the Disco Volante anymore. It's the Flying Saucer, but it looks really cool, and it certainly adds to the fact that Largo looks like one rich bugger, so he's got the mula 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 from doing the bad Naughty Spectre stuff. Um, Blofeld um, in it, different looking. He's got the whole beard. He's played this time by Max von Sydow. Yeah, I kind of think there's a little bit of miscasting maybe there. Now... What do I think of Never Say Never Again overall? Okay, I know a lot of people don't love this film, but I like Never Say Never Again. And what I like about it is, I think the pacing in Never Say Never Again, especially the first kind of three quarters of it, is so much better than Thunderball. Thunderball loses so much pacing in Shrublands. And then he goes to Nassau, and I don't mind the underwater stuff, but then he's in and out of the hotel... And the editing in Thunderball is just off. And a lot of the sets in Thunderball, they look like film sets. And they don't look good. And the photography on it, for me, in the interior stuff, not so much the exterior shots in Thunderball, but the interior stuff just looks too heavy. And the music's drab. And the music acts like sound effects. Where Never Say Never Again, it flows. There's big, beautiful, wide, bright, wide-angle shots. You know, And when he's in Nassau... The music kicks in, the big wide angle, it's so good. The worst part about, probably I hate to say it, the worst part about Never Say Never Again is Rowan Atkinson. Mr. Bond, Mr. Bond. I mean, come on. No spy or spy helper would ever act like this. So, yeah, unfortunately, um, Rowan Atkinson is pretty wasted here because his character is just embarrassing. The chicky babe that Bond goes off on uh, to the boat with. Um, well, she's going to catch up with him later. She then sees him in the water. Then he's escaped from a shark attack because of what uh, Fatima Blush has done. Bond ends up hooking up with this gorgeous chick. She was actually, I'm trying to remember her name off the top of my head, but she was the hotel clerk chick in the Roger Moore film, 1977 Spy Who Loved Me. So it's the same girl, Valerie... Is Valerie West? Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but again, I just do all this off the top of my head and on my Bond knowledge and memory, but I think it's Valerie West or Valerie Leone? Valerie Leone? Yeah, Valerie Leone. I'm pretty sure that's it. But she's in it, and she's gorgeous looking too. She looks really great. Um, so that's, yeah, pretty much the film so far. I'll tell you what, there is a really underrated scene and part of this film I love, and I've heard other reviewers pick on it, but I like it. Bond and Felix go up into... They, they come up out of the sub and they're in these they're MX things, whatever they are, but they're flying around these little jet propulsion things and they're using those to get around. And I like them. I reckon they're really cool. I don't mind the visual effects for them either. I think they're pretty cool. But overall, the pacing and everything of Never Say Never Again, I just like it better. And also, Connery, he's not up to Thunderball you know, performance-wise, of course, and he's, you know, 18 years older or whatever. 
But at least he looks like he's having fun this time and he looks fitter than compared to the dead walking sack of crap he was in Diamonds Are Forever. So guys, go back to Never Say Never Again and give it another go. Turn the lights off, get a big hot chocolate. It's one of those Sunday, Sunday night movies. Sit down, watch it, and just enjoy it for what it is. It's got some really great moments. And one of the best lines in the film is where, <laughs> where Sean Connery's uh, James Bond is at Shrubbins, and the nurse says to him, could you fill this up? She wants a urine sample. Can you fill this up, please? And he just looks at her, he's like, from here? Awesome line. Awesome, awesome line. So I like Never Say Never Again. I'm going to give Never Say Never Again 3.5 stars out of 5 because I do like it. Go back. Give it another try, guys. And i tell you what. Before I sign off on this one, I've got to mention Algonon. This guy is awesome. Okay, so he's this film's version of Q. And... I just love this guy. I wish he was in the film more. And one of his lines, or his main line to Bond, he asks Bond, where is he going? And Bond says, uh, off to the Bahamas. And he looks at Bond, he says, lucky bloody you. Awesome stuff. Okay, guys, please comment. Please give a thumbs up. It means a lot to me. Checks in the mail if you do. And I'll make all your wildest dreams come true. Guys, till next time, tomorrow, I'm going to come back with a view to a kill review. Let me know what you think of this one. And tell me anything else, other videos and that you would like me to do. Okay, guys, till next time, keep on funny. Bye-bye. Rah! Okay, I'm really going this time. Gotta go watch a video kill.